Yeah. <laughs> I've had several people over the years actually recommend 1776 to me as a fan of musical theater, as someone who is interested in history, as someone who grew up in Boston. Now I get it. Um, this particular interpretation, this revival, co-directed by Jeffrey L. Page and Diane Paulus. So this is the third, <laughs> the third Diane Paulus show that I have seen this year. And I feel like I just saw the same magic that audiences in 2018 who got to see Jagged Little Pill at the ART in previews witnessed. I feel like she's got another hit on her hands and I'm really, really excited to see this one come to Broadway. As much as I have delayed my viewing of this particular musical, I'm kind of glad I waited. I'm happy that this is my introduction to this story in this show because the cast is made entirely of female and non-binary performers, which is very different from the original production and the, the movie that came out decades ago. I got to attend a sort of virtual behind the scenes sneak peek of this show a few months ago where Diane and Jeffrey were talking about how they were really excited about the way that they've modernized the story. They were very coy in this little sneak peek as to what all those changes were. Like they didn't talk about the cast or anything really specific about the things they had changed about the plot or the, the production of it. But I could tell just from the little things that they were telling us that it was going to be more diverse in a lot of ways, having to do with gender and um, race, ethnicity, all that kind of stuff. And they absolutely delivered on that. One thing that really blew me away about this production was the sheer talent on that stage. There's not a weak link among them. I, I, I love that every everybody, even the, the smaller characters, got their moment to shine, and particularly the courier. <sighs> the solo that the courier sings was so incredibly emotional and just like vocally powerful. Part of me thought I was gonna bear witness to and be a part of another mid-act standing ovation courtesy of an ART preview because that was just she she finished singing and everyone was just I mean everybody was clapping it wasn't quite the audience to to stand up but you could tell everybody was really moved by that, by that song and by that performance in particular. All of the, the ensemble that wasn't gonna be in the next scene, there were maybe like four or five people that weren't in it, but everybody else was on stage for that and kind of kept in shadow. And they were wearing like black tops so that they, they wouldn't stand out so that the focus could very much be on this, this courier. Yeah, that was, that was a big number. And it was and it was given to the courier who really hadn't had hardly any lines before this this sequence. I also love that the secretary, who I liked from the beginning, the actress playing that character, she was very funny and and had all these moments where there were these little bits of comic relief, like when 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 she was reading the uh, the statement early on that they were trying to vote on and kept getting interrupted. Tried to get through it like three or four different times and like the the next time when John Adams interrupted, she was like she was like, Will you just let me get through it once? And it was really funny. But yeah, like everybody like everybody in the show had had these moments to shine. Even though <laughs> everybody on stage is either female or non binary, that there aren't any cis men on stage which already separates this from the original in a wonderful, wonderful way. There are a few female characters in it, and one is Abigail Adams, is John Adams' wife. And we see a lot of scenes between those those two where it's clear that, that John is like writing to her, that they're not actually in the same space, but they're they're connected through their like love for each other. It's just a really sweet arc throughout the throughout the show. And the songs <laughs> 
that those two sing, the harmonies between those two performers are just incredible. Those are really, really affecting, affecting scenes. And I also love the way that they, they never quite connected. One number in particular, John would be sort of like moving towards Abigail and they would just miss each other. And John would even like kind of try to hug and then miss. Yeah, that was powerful. I really do feel like the success of something like Hamilton that, that came out a few years ago at this point, but is still, you know, very, very much a part of the zeitgeist because Lynn manuel Miranda just knows how to make a show. I do think that his inspiration to take something from history and, you know, mold it and bring it into something that's accessible to the musical theater audience has to have been taken from from 1776 which kind of did it first did it in a different way did it in a more comedic way in a lot of ways but there's something about you know making these real people these founding fathers of our nation accessible and making them human and kind of you know giving them a little bit more personality than just a name on a piece of paper. At the very end of the show, the secretary is reading out the names of who had signed the Declaration of Independence, and the names were like written, they were like projected on the curtain that was sort of a set piece th throughout the, the whole show. I think one of the things that I appreciated at the beginning was, was how they projected different things, like the date and the people's names and like the silhouettes of some of the, some of the men, you know, to kind of help enhance the what's going on on stage so you can kind of keep up with where we're at in the story and and who's being introduced and all that kind of stuff i really liked what they did with the with the lighting and, and the staging in that way and that's something i always wonder about when you see something in previews how it's gonna change when it's brought to broadway and and set pieces are one of those things that i don't know if depending on the the make of the theater if that's going to continue, if that's always, if it's always going to be like a curtain like that, or if once you get to the theater, it's going to be like panels. So it's cool to see a show in previews that's going to go to Broadway so that you get to see that evolution. One of my favorite things that this production did, and, and again, I don't know if this is something that they took from the original or if this is something they've enhanced. It already is going to be different from something that was made decades ago because of the current climate that we're in where independence and having your rights taken away and racial inequity and inequality, all of those are so very prevalent right now. So a modern audience watching this, a, a not just modern, a 2022 audience, a July of 2022 audience watching this, a lot of things hit differently. And I think one of the smartest things that they had these performers do was to include the audience in the storytelling. There would be a lot of moments where whoever was kind of making a point, especially in the middle of the debates and things, where they would sort of turn to the audience and like gesture to the audience to like get their feedback. And sometimes the audience would cheer. Other times they would just kind of be there just feeling like they were being included in the conversation and, and also like used as proof that their point was being made or whatever. There was one moment where Abigail Adams was talking about, you know, when you write this declaration, don't forget the women. She had a line that was something to the effect of, you know, it's hard to feel free in a country that's taking away our rights. And when she said that, she was facing the audience. And there was a lot of applause from the audience on that line. It reminded me of the footage that I've seen from POTUS on the day of the Supreme Court ruling, when they overturn Roe v. Wade, Julianne Huff's character had a line about how reproductive rights should be, you know, something that we all have access to. And, and the, like, standing ovations that that line got was a very similar sort of vibe in the room when that happened. But I think the most powerful sort of fourth wall break that happened in the show was toward the very end, as they were debating the importance of abolishing slavery and making that a part of the Declaration of Independence, which we all know it isn't. So I wasn't sure if they were going to pull a Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and rewrite history 
and just decide to abolish it and then make that sort of like the wouldn't it be nice if this happened thing but they stuck to what actually happened in history which was the compromise of taking that part of it out so that they could get the south on board and there's a whole like musical number where the representative from South Carolina kind of talked about the importance of the slavery industry in terms of like how South Carolina got by economically which is hard to watch I'm glad that they went there because it's very historically accurate that that would be the argument there but what was interesting about that scene was there there was sort of this moment where they had oh my gosh the choreography in this the dancing sure but in particular the choreography with the set pieces and like how they moved the the tables around so it would be either like one long table or several little tables and kind of like the different places they were so at this point the tables were all facing each other they were facing each other and so there was this space in the middle and i started to notice that there was this group of people that had had gathered sort of at the back of that space and it was all of the black performers who weren't like the leads in that story right then so that all the people sitting at the tables were were not black they weren't all white either because this is a very racially diverse production which is wonderful but there was clearly like a focus on we're bringing out the the black performers here and then they had this sequence where they were being auctioned off like slaves and yeah <laughs> this is a very powerful this very powerful imagery an impressive impressive choice um in terms of blocking that scene and choosing which performers to have in that sequence and how to how to how to do that sequence i again i'm really curious to see the original now because i bet there's not a sequence like that in there or if it is it wouldn't be as effective as what was happening in this one so that that sequence that sort of was like gonna clinch it like if you do not take this out we are not going to approve it and it's gonna if independence isn't gonna happen at least not in this way and so when jefferson decided to strike it it's a really big moment and they make a point of making a big moment and the way that they really did that was before that happens as they're still kind of debating it there's a moment where John Adams is really trying to make his point heard and and explain why it's important for this new free independent nation to not have slavery be a part of it. And as the opposition it keeps digging their heels in and it seems like it's there's there's no way around it as John Adams is talking the entire company like turns to where they're all facing the audience very slowly very slowly turns to face the audience but the moment that really just like <sighs> that really hit john adams and benjamin franklin are there and they're sort of like if we do this then this is going to have ramifications on generations to come and they will they will hate us for it and all this kind of stuff and so it's like sort of like addressing the audience directly that is currently <laughs> dealing with the ramifications of this and then benjamin franklin makes a very good point which is we won't hear them like that's not going to happen for decades centuries beyond when we're not going to be alive anymore so it's not actually going to directly affect us and right now we need independence and if this is the the only way to do it then this is what we have to do and one thing that this show does is it shows just how kind of messy the origins of our our country's freedom are there are a lot of sequences of just like how much these these men were just like standing around doing nothing how much just like on a whim they would be like if i don't get my fishing whatever i'm not going to say yes there's a real big theme about the fact that these are just men these are imperfect men not demigods trying to do the best that they could to 
to create our country and they didn't always make the best decisions. They didn't always think of everybody who would be affected. They don't even know what the ripple effect of their actions was going to be in the long run. I kind of like that the show doesn't necessarily dignify or glorify these men. You can tell that there's good guys and bad guys in the story, that there's antagonists and there's protagonists, and it's not meant to be this, like, it's okay what they did, or this is what had to be done for the country to be created. It's just sort of a look at it, and I think that by reframing it and having women and non-binary performers in these roles, one thing that this show definitely did change was they were very intentional about the diversity that had been infused into the story. Like, they opened up with the performers not fully in costume. They, they were, like, holding their jacket over their arms, and there were shoes that were placed right at the front of the stage. And kind of stood there for a little bit, and then they put the jacket on, and then they took their shoes off, and then they put the new shoes on so that they all had the same, you know, 18th century looking shoes on. Sort of showing, we're performers, we're going to play these characters, we're going to assume the roles of these men, and kind of take ownership of this story, because we are also Americans, and we look different from the men who created this country. But that doesn't mean that we don't own our history. And I think that's a really powerful message to, to be conveying to the, to the crowd before the show even starts. And not with any dialogue. It's just what they're doing on stage. It's just the blocking of what's happening. And then at the end of the show, same thing. They all, they all took off their jacket and they kind of held the jacket out, almost like this is this is the story of these men and all the names were like being projected on the screen and then the lights went went down with of all of them holding their jacket out and i'm not even sure exactly what that really is meant to mean other than it's probably just meant to be kind of interpreted by the viewer what i said about them you know claiming ownership over the the country's history is an interpretation that's my interpretation but it could also be you know especially at the end it could be sort of like donning and then shedding these men sort of saying this was history and it was important but now we take we take the jackets off and now it's up to us to to build the country that we want to see that reflects our values in this day and age reflects the diversity that is so beautiful about our country just like the diversity that was happening on stage so that's sort of my interpretation of the message that's being conveyed there. I, I think it's one of those shows that it's like, it's funny. There are definitely a lot of comedic moments in this show. It definitely keeps things light, especially in the first act. But it really allows itself to get serious and get real about the truth of the state that our country was in. The fact that, you know, some of the decisions being made are going to have a negative effect on on the rest of society just because it's that hard to make things happen in congress i mean not to get political but that's still an issue you know that there's people who are willing to compromise and there's people who aren't and unfortunately the people who aren't willing to compromise tend to get their way because it at least allows for some progress to be made. And the people who want to compromise and want change sometimes have to kind of bend their morals a little bit, which is unfortunate. It's still happening. It was happening back in 1776, and it's still happening today. And I, that's, as, that's as political as I will get on this video but it's a very timely show in a lot of ways and i unfortunately think it will be timely for a long time i held this up earlier which is the equivalent of a playbill because they don't have paper playbills at the art for this one um they have a little qr code that you scan and then you go on the site 
you know, save paper, save trees, all that kind of stuff. But um, this QR code goes to just sort of the details of the show, talking about, you know, of course, cast and crew and all that, but also has a couple statements from Diane Paulus and Jeffrey L. Page about this particular re revival and the different modifications that were made to it. And it also includes a little um, sort of disclaimer about, like, strobe effects that are in the show that might hinder people's ability to watch it. They talk about, you know, how there's some sexual innuendo in it. I I appreciated that they had a, a warning that there's there's a gun that doesn't fire because there's a one of the characters is carrying a rifle almost the entire time. Um, and there is the sound of a gunshot at one point. I appreciate how much this production in particular, all of the performers' pronouns were in the playbill. At the ART, they have uh, gender-neutral bathrooms, which is very inclusive. But just, you know, they, they, they're very, very intentional about being aware of all the different ways that they can make the experience more accessible for people, make it a safe space for everybody who's coming to the theater. And, you know, reading the, the warning about the sound of a gunshot that's in the show, it reminded me of how When Stranger Things Season 4, Volume 1, and the new Obi-Wan Kenobi series were released, I think on the same day, they both contained trigger warnings, and it was just a, a reminder of just how common that is, and, and how that, that's very relatable content for people to to see on screen because it's something that happens <laughs> way too frequently and when we have disclaimers like there's going to be a gunshot in this it's it's helpful when there's a disclaimer but it just makes me so sad that we're so used to gun violence that a it's used as a plot device in shows and movies as a way to evoke emotion and really make you sympathize with the story being told, but also that guns are so a part of our lives that the sound of a gunshot doesn't sound like it's coming from cop show on TV. It's something that far too many people actually have experienced in their life. And it can be something that actually gives people real PTSD because of the world that we're living in. So. Anyway, I said I wasn't going to get political on this video, <laughs> but here we are. So, getting back. Seventeen seventy six. Well done, Diane Paulus and Jeffrey L. Page, and to all of the cast and crew of that show. I feel so privileged that I got to see it in previews at the ART before it just like takes over Broadway, because <laughs> it's going to be amazing really excited to see how far this goes. I think it's going to get some get some nominations, probably get some awards. I can't wait for the rest of the theater community to see it because it's a special one. So make sure you go see it because it's going to be worth it. If you're a fan of the original 1776, like you can I can tell even though I haven't seen it, it's like captures that that essence, but it's just like deepened by the choices that Diane and Jeffrey made in this one. So it's really, really special. So highly recommend. Definitely go see it. If you like this video and you want to hit that little thumbs up, that'd be cool. If you really like this video and you want to see other videos that I post on here, there's a little bit more theater on here, but there's also some, some movie reviews and other things, but you can, uh, Hit that little subscribe button and you'll become one of my subscribers and you'll get notified of when I put more videos on here. So yeah, you can kind of keep up with with me as I as I consume more uh, more theater, more movies, all that kind of stuff. So watching shows like this just sort of it's a good reminder of kind of like how far we've come as a country, but also how far we still have to go and getting to see it reframed in this way. It's really empowering. 
um, it was a really, it was kind of a risky choice, but I think that it really paid off, and I think it made this production all the more meaningful. So, 